What's up guys? If this is your first time to my channel, my name's Kevin Toppenberg. This is my lathe. It was made in 1935. It's got a 15 inch swing and a six foot bed. I got a good show for you today. We're going to do a couple of things. First, I'm going to show restoring an old nut. The nut is the part in this cross slide that makes it go uh, back and forth. Uh, restoring an old nut. And I'm also going to show making an adapter for a new style nut that's made normally for a CNC machine. Plus, I got a new quick change tool post and that's exciting. I went back and looked at my footage and when I picked this up, it was October of last year and we're now in July. So by my calculations, that's nine months. So my baby here has a big day and today's video, we're actually going to finish the project. We're gonna cross the finish line and that's pretty exciting. So. I invite you to stick around for the journey. I think it's gonna be a good show. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and a comment, that helps a lot. Here it is at the end. It's a little bit. So that, that play is gonna be from wear in the nut. I talked before about this has wear in it and it leads to quite a bit of slop. This is an 11 uh, inch a diameter. I'm going to replace it with the one that's a little bit bigger, which is three quarter inch. As far as the nut, I have two options. I have this, this 11 16th nut is very loose. I have purchased a, um, a three quarter Acme left-handed eight thread per inch. And I'm gonna see if I can use that tap to get a good nut with this if it comes, but it's coming from China and it's probably gonna be at least a month before it gets here. The other option I have is I purchased um, this kind of a nut, which is designed to go into a flange, a round flange to, to connect in a CNC machine. But I have 3D printed this thing, which will be a model, and it would go in there like that. There'll be threads right here. I think that that would then, you know, allow it to be mounted, I mean, in the same way that this is mounted. And I think I've checked my sizes and I think that'll be okay. So I'm, this this is probably a better option if I can get this part made. That may be a little tricky to, to manufacture out of steel. So I'll have to see if I can do that or I'll just try to see if I can refurb this, um, this nut. I wanna show how I modeled up this nut adapter with open scad. All right, so first of all, I modeled up the groove that's in my carriage. Now, obviously the groove is longer than that, but that's the profile. And I had to carefully measure this. It seemed to be a round, uh, a round circle, and then there was straight edges that came up from that. So I measured that all carefully. I then uh, modeled up the old nut. I didn't put threads in it, but because I'm just looking for the dimension, but you know, I measured carefully how tall it was and how wide it was at the core and all, all of that. Then I came back and I have made a new nut mount that looks like this. You can see it's tight, but it does have clearance. I actually have 3D printed this out in plastic and mounted it on there and ran it back and forth and confirmed that yes, it does clear. That was as tight as I could get it. I would like to have had more space. I saw one guy on the internet that took his carriage and mounted on his mill and milled out a larger area here, but you say it misses as good as a mile. So I think that I've got enough clearance there. Okay, now let me get rid of that groove. And this is the adapter. I'll show you what the nut looks like. Well, I don't have the threads on it for some reason. So let's go back to the nut adapter. I have the actual physical nut and I've put it in the 3D piece and it, and it does fit. All right, so the next thing I had to think about is how am I gonna manufacture this? Um, you know, because if you cut off too much and it's too small, then you can't hold on to it and you can't do what you need to do. So I came up with uh, some manufacturing steps. So the first step I'm gonna start with is this block. And I wanna be able to machine off of this, so I need to have some dimensions. So I have added in uh, the physical dimensions of that. Okay, so that's the first step. Second step is I'm going to put this in a mill in a vise with the vise clamping on down here at the bottom. And then I will mill off this curved edge like that around there. Next step is I'll hold it in a four jaw chuck like this and spin it around and I'm gonna shorten down that top, leaving this, which is where it engages with the uh, cross slide up above it. And then that'll also need to be tapped uh, for a half inch, 13 threads per inch. I'm also going to, I forgot to mention when I mill off this thing, I'm also gonna put a, a hole here down through it 
that I can use and put a pin in there and then use that to center and get it back in precisely when I take it out and put it back into the chuck. Third step is going to be to machine out this outer part. That's for the smooth part of the nut. Then you, you can see there's a step off right, I don't know if you can see my mouse, you can see right there is going to be, um, that's where the threads are gonna go. And then behind there, I've got another step out. I don't know if that shows up right there. Another step out, that'll be for a thread relief so that as my thread cutter is cutting through, it has something to, something to go into, a little bit of space to stop. All right, next one stage is I then have to actually cut the threads. There's some threads there. And that's going to be a one inch, uh, 18 threads per inch, which is a, a non-standard thread configuration. And then lastly, I will cut off the back and that should be my part. So that's my plan. The best thing about plans are is that they can always change and they can often fail. Wish me luck. I've been making an Acme nut adapter so I can use the new style brass nuts for my cross slide. But I wasn't sure when I ordered that whether that was going to work out, whether it's going to ultimately be successful. So I also purchased a three quarter inch, eight threads per inch left handed Acme tap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 11 sixteenths, which again is 1 16th short of three quarters. Uh, tap that's all worn out and I'm going to see if I can expand the size with this tap and turn it back into a good nut. And even, um, let's say I can do that, I'm still gonna go forward with the nut adapter. Having that other nut working will let me use my lathe to help uh, continue the manufacturing of the new style. So all right, so let's get uh, set up and I'm gonna use this. Now, the tap drill size, uh, I found a chart, uh, or 0.6325 is I think what it is, but I'll have to look on the chart. But I don't really have a good way to reach down in there and find um, if that old nut is that diameter. So it's possible that as I put this in, the minor diameter of this will be bigger than the minor diameter of that worn out nut. And if that's true, then I don't, I'm expecting that the tap won't go down in there right. So I think I'm just gonna try, but I'm not gonna push it super hard. All right, this is left-handed. going in quite easily. Right now I feel it's cutting a little bit. Oh, the minor diameter on this thing is way in there, so that shouldn't be any problem at all as far as running the tap through. Now, I'm going to put it on the lead screw, it may not work. This nut is kind of a trapezoid shape, so it's a little hard to hold it in the vise. I'm actually kind of happy that it's being difficult to cut, which means that it's not just all worn out already, that it'll be a good fit for that new size. Come out after angle it. And I think that I'm squeezing up here at the wide end, so I don't think I'm going to be deforming that metal as I run the tap through and then end up with an oval. And we're through. So I think the issue is going to be that at the peaks or the depths where it has cut new, it will have a good surface. But in the shallow part, the part that's sticking into the lumen or into the center of the shaft, it's going to be narrow and worn. So I think that this will work for a short time, but I think that getting that, um, that new nut that's going to have the full width between threads for the full height of the thread tooth is going to be um, a lot better. But I think this will work at least for the short term. 
And again, I could use this to just manuf use this tap to just manufacture a whole new nut like this, and that's always an option. But I want to see if I can get that nut adapter to work. All right, this is one thing I was afraid of. Um, as I put this in here, it won't go on, and it won't go on because the threads stick in too far compared to this thing, which means the minor diameter of the nut is too narrow compared to what needs to be for this lead screw, which means I can take out some of that worn part. I think maybe I'll try to see if I can chuck this up in my lathe and just try to skim off the top. Again, I'm not sure quite how best to measure the minor diameter, but maybe if I just take off a little bit at a time, I can test it against this and see when it goes on. Okay, before I can bore out the inner part of this nut for the minor diameter, I need to have a way to make sure that the shaft is in line with the spindle axis. So I put in this new three quarter inch lead screw. I was able to get it in about two threads before it started binding up. And I'm going to then use this to indicate the shaft in my fore jaw. Okay, I don't know if you can see it there, but I've got it in within a half thousand. So I'm gonna go with that. Okay, I'm set up here. So I've got an indicator off my tool post so I can tell how much I'm changing my depth of cut. I've got a, uh, a boring bar in here and I've gone back and forth and I've just touched off. So now I'm gonna take out 10 thousandths. All right, I'm gonna take that off. Boy, that's doing it. That's all the way through. 10 thousandths was all it took. I'm looking at those threads down there. It's kind of hard to show, but they still seem like they're coming to a pretty narrow peak at their tip. So I think at the base, they're wide. Again, I think this will do for the short term. You clean up all that swarf in there. Boy, that nut with the uh, threads cut out really is nice and precise. Let me show you. Before I had slop, there is nothing. There is no movement. I mean, I'd have to even just imagine to see whether there's any movement in there. I think that's perfect. Um, so if that other nut thing doesn't work, I think this will be fine. Hey all, I got a quick change tool post. Right here in this box, let's get it open. This is the Bowstar one. It's the uh, C size, which is the biggest. Most My small lathe has a AXO. And then for a 15 inch swing, you can use a BXO or a CXO. But I found a website saying you should really go for the larger ones. All right, let's get the main boxes out. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I think this particular kit had the regular and then it had two extra tool mounts, as I recall. Yeah, that's a good size tool mount, I like that. That's nice. This thing is big. So here's the front of the box. Very non-specific. Okay. Looks nice so far. This is the wedge type, not the piston type. All right, so here's a comparison. I'm pretty sure this is the AXO um, 250-111, and I think it's that first digit, the 110, I think it's that first digit that determines what the size is. And so this is a 250-30, so you can see them side by side in the size difference. So obviously this can take bigger tools and it's more rigid. 
So I got this on eBay and I paid the usual price, which is more than I'm happy to about having paid, but um, I just was not gonna be able to use it with that lantern post style. Not the smoothest I've seen. I have a sharper tool. I changed out this holder for one that's straight rather than at an angle, but all of them seem to cock up. It's just, just kind of crazy. I guess maybe they're made for this lantern post thing. I don't know. Goodness, that thing's squawking. I think when I get a better tool post, get my tools in at a flat angle, uh, I think it's going to cut better. I hate these lantern post ones. But I thought for me, this would be about the right balance. Okay. Now this bottom piece is going to have to be machined to fit into my T-slot. It's going to be too wide. That's just a generic uh, size. Two inches, 25 thousandths essentially. And this is three inches. So I'll have to wait till I can get access to a mill to, to be able to do that. It did say in the instructions, or in the purchase uh, description, that you'll have to machine this bottom plate. I'm happy with this. I think it's going to work real well. These surfaces look good. So I think that'll serve me well. I just realized also that in addition to being too wide, it's also a little bit too thick. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some layout on this so it'll be ready to go. Looking at this screw here, three quarter inch 16. It's the same on both sides. This nut on the top would be an inch and an eighth. Or it's nice here. I went swimming in there this morning. The water was nice. Yep. Much, much, much later. talk a little bit about what I'm doing. I wanted to use a standard size nut, but my holder, I don't know what happened, but apparently when I was taking off the rounded sides, I cut the, the diameter too narrow. So my wall thickness was getting really thin. So I had the option of either living with that wall thinness or uh, taking the size of my nut diameter down just a little bit. So I took off about 10 thousandths, 10 to 20 thousandths off this, but then I started worrying about not staying concentric because I had this all set up in the four jaw and I didn't want to take that out. So I was trying to do it with a three jaw and it was in there fairly good. And then I thought I had it right and I took it out to try to measure it and it wasn't quite right. So I, I couldn't put it back in the three jaw, but the long and the short of it is I opened that up just a little bit. My final diameter on this, One point seven seven. So I think it was. I think that's three thousandths down from what it was before. I think it was like one point oh eight oh or oh eight five. I, I can't remember. Um, but anyway, that just now just fits in there. So now this is of course going in backwards. It'll have to have the threads in there. So that's the next part to work on. But that does go in there smoothly. It's way down in there in a hole. It's hard to watch what you're doing. I'm having to go a lot by the DRO. All right, so now I gotta figure out how, what my actual size is in there. Six hundred and eighty nine. 
Going for 932. So my DRO reads 891. This reads 890, so that's pretty good. We're within a thousandth of each other. So I've got 40 thousandths left to go. Alright, this should be my final cut. I decided to make it 935. Um, 932 is what I calculated, but I did a test cut. In this one, I had oversized at 960 and the thread it threads in nice. So I think 935 would work. Okay, 936, that should do fine for threading. This is my threading bar with a 60 degree internal, uh, it's a threading bar for internal threading and an insert with 60 degrees. Then I need to set my, um, my gear for 18 threads per inch, which is B, D, two, and that's the thread. Now, I previously did this uh, with my test cut, so I know that that is the right thread for inch. Man, that's going to be hard to do that down in the depths of a hole. And I don't know that I can show you anything. Okay, I got these goofy lights on so I can see down in the depths of that hole. I put some ink on the inside of there. I have my thread set at 18 threads per inch. I'm gonna try to make a cut, then I'll see if I can test it, if I can get a thread gauge in there. I think it's right, but I still wanna double check it. On that first cut, I don't think I got any at all, so I'm just gonna, um, go in advancing on the compound until I can start seeing it threading. I don't think, I think I just barely skimmed it on that one. So I'm going to take a 10 thousandths cut just to be careful. And I started there at 80 thousandths. Taking another 10. Most of my marking is gone in there. Wish I would have set my DRO when I started. I could have told how much I was doing. Um, but then actually I'm advancing with this, not with the DRO. pretty close. It'll go in a quarter of a turn. I 
I found online that they said if you take 0.75 divided by threads per inch, that should be the amount that you advance on the diagonal. And I've already, and that was like 45, and I think I've done 40 so far. So let's go a little bit more. Go another two thousandths. I could still hear it cutting that time, so I'm gonna do another spring pass. I put a little bevel in where the teeth start, thinking that would help. It didn't. So I'm just going in deeper. Well, after going round and round and round and round, that goes in a good two turns, and then I kind of run out of ability to hold it. So I need to put in two pins where I can get a good grip on it. But I think that I've got it. Finally. Woohoo! And yummy blackberries. One, two, three. Four, five. Yummy. I already showed a lot of these plans uh, when I was demonstrating the, the computer version of the SCAD, so I'm gonna skip over here. I did wanna just point out that I was really struggling with the sequence of operations, what to do first, so I actually went ahead and 3D printed out all the individual steps just to kinda help me visualize. And I think it was a good thing that I did because it was able to help others understand my plans and give me good feedback. All right, that was my original plan. Then I got to talking to some friends and they said they didn't think that having that round back was gonna be a good idea for trying to hold it while machining it. They didn't think that this thing was gonna be able to be held tight enough so that when I was rotating it in the table, it wouldn't slip and end up uh, messing up my cut. All right, so went back, that's version one. Went back and made a version two where we're gonna keep the backside square so that we could keep it in a vise. All right, it all looked great on paper. So here's what happened in real life. So I got my, I got my unit, got my part, put it in the vise. We uh, got a center, a small hole in the center. I think it was like three eighths. She used a, a bore indicator of some sort so that, that circled around and got the mill exactly centered up on that center hole. And then we had this in a vise and the vise was mounted onto a rotary table. We got it in and then moved over the required amount and then rotated this part with the tool spinning here to cut all the way around. When I got done, I did notice that it was, there was a little bit of a step off and I thought, well, that won't matter that much. Uh, went on and did the rest of it. Uh, got this all done, everything. Then when I started putting in my bore here, the wall turned out to be quite thin, thinner than I had planned. It ended up 35. Over here, it's 55. So I'm not real happy about how thin those walls are. And the only thing I can think of must happen is that when I put over that somehow as the wheel was spinning, it kind of pulled in. Like if I was, I don't remember if I was climbing or conventional milling or, yeah, I thought I was doing conventional milling because it was the thing spins this way and I thought I rotated it like that. But for whatever reason, and we have a DRO on it and I had it centered, but still it came off and if you can look, like I said, this wall is thicker than this wall, and this one has that little step in. So I'm not real happy about that. Now it is steel, and it's possible it'll still be strong enough. Um, all right, so that's the first problem. The second problem is, so I had this in a four jaw, was I cut out my hole, and then was doing my threading. But you can see it's in there, almost an inch before it starts the threading. And so it's difficult to get in there to see if the threads will start because not only is it in a ways, but there was also this hole here, which inter which interacts with the first little bit of those threads. I don't know if that's showing or not, but that, that, that top thread comes down and interacts with those first few threads a little bit. So I was having difficult time seeing if my nut would, would go in. 
And so I kept working and working and making my threads deeper and deeper. And finally, I think I took it out and I can't remember all the sequence, but I did get the threads deep enough, but they were just actually, they're actually a little bit too deep. If you notice here, that's a little bit loose. Now, I think it's got good, if I screw it in, I mean, it's tight and solid when I screw it in. And I think I've got pretty good overlap in there, but you know, I may want to end up remaking this part at some point. I guess it's just partly my um, beginning status as a machinist, and this needs to still be cleaned up. Um, I, w I wanted it to be better than this, and I'd like to do it again. But when I do this, I have to go down to Knoxville because my mill's not going, and it ends up taking days. Um, maybe when I get my mill up and going, I may remake this. But for right now, I think I'm going to try it. I'm going to go ahead and get it in the in the lathe, get it chucked up, and then do a, a cutoff and cut off um, this square part. You know what? I did not center this tool. I bet you that's why it's not cutting right. That might work better if I do things properly. All right. Well, here it is. I actually think it turned out fairly nice. I used a belt sander to smooth that all out and, and uh, make the transition nice. I put two little holes in the nut so I could get it with my, I'm not sure, pin pliers. Um, so that goes in real nice. The I need to drill a hole there for oil. The oil comes down through there. So it's got its imperfections, but going from here to here, I think that's pretty cool. All right, I drilled and tapped for a 1032 set screw. I don't know if you can see it down in there. And I drilled an oil access hole. And then to make sure there was no burrs, I ran this tap through it. Now, by the time I got this tap, could I have made a block, a, um, I'm sorry, a cross slide nut with this 10 times easier than making this adapter? Was it worth it? Probably, it's good, good exercise. Here's a comparison of the original nut after I bored it out and then tapped it for the larger cross slide screw that I replaced. So you can see that this one extends down further and it's wider, and that's why I didn't have much leeway there. Right, I'm gonna try to get it installed. See if all the measurements were right. Yes, it fits up in there beautifully. I'm gonna have that side facing the lead screw. Let's make sure that goes down all the way. And it does. But for right now, I'm gonna loosen it so I can get it back on the lead screw. All right, there we go. Let's make sure it travels the whole way without hitting anything, and it does. Okay, I've machined down the nut portion of this quick change tool post, and I put a side hole here for a 1032 set screw. I'm gonna use a little piece of brass that will slide down in there to be the thing to apply pressure against the threads. I feel like that's less likely to bung them up so that'll tighten up like that all right let's get the old lantern tool post off much as i love it not that goes in there nicely that'll go on there like that that'll look nice two thumbs up well folks i've got the cross slide Nut replaced, I got the cross slide lead screw replaced. 
I have the cross slide scraped in. I've got the quick change tool post. I got the nut machined in. So I don't think I have anything more to do on this lathe. So you know what that means? I'm done! I am going to make a threading dial indicator. I may show that, but that's not really to get the lathe back to uh, finish. That's kind of an add-on, an accessory. So this job is done! Thanks for watching guys. That's all I've got for today. Um, appreciate you coming along for the ride. Uh, it's been a big journey getting this all done. I think I have enough footage for at least one more video with this where I make the threading dial as kind of an add-on to the lathe. Keep your eyes peeled out for that. I'm not sure how long it'll take me to get that all put together, but uh, should be coming in the pipe. Thanks for watching. Peace out.